lot of kids grow up without a dad in their life. I was one of these kids, and because of that, I developed a lot of struggles and issues and uh, struggled through my childhood. In the end, though, I found what I really needed. This is the story of my dad and me. Hey! Can you hear me? First, a little bit about my background. My dad is English, my mom is German, and they both got to know each other in the US at the Olympic Games in 19... Well, a long time ago. After getting married in Germany, they moved to England and started their life together. Not long after that, I was born and we all moved back to Germany. That's me when I was about two years old. That's also me. That is me and my dad. He dressed me, or we dressed me as an Indian, which was pretty cool. And here we are, also about two years old. That was shortly before he left us. When you were born, there was a there was a moment in my experience where I just felt like I can't do this. I can't be a father. I don't know how to do this. It feels so totally overwhelming. Problem problems that I that I have as a person, as an individual, because I was very young. You know, I was like. 22, something like that. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I just felt very overwhelmed, but I felt very close to you. And I've always felt very close to you, always. You were an absolutely delightful little boy, mm. and I loved being with you. I never, ever had a problem being with you. I loved playing with you. I loved being with you. You were lovely. Absolutely beautiful. It was just a delight to, to be with you. I, I don't know what else to say, really. The relationship with your mum was just so tumultuous that, you know, we were fighting over what way a cup would go in a cupboard, whether it should be face down or face up. And, you know, it, 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 it had become the battle of the titans over absolutely everything. As a mature person now, I just think, oh my God, what a load of rubbish. The majority of that I would see through a different lens now, but at the time it was, it was, very, it was both very challenging and I felt like my personal integrity was at stake with the things that, that were being demanded of me. I didn't think that I, I was able to maintain my own, my own sense of self. Oh, okay. Against the demands that were being placed on me to conform. It was very, very, very hard to leave you. And I, I felt like things had been said to me that had made it very difficult to engage with you. As you can imagine, that was a big cut for me. I got angry, I couldn't understand the situation, I felt confused, I felt rejected, abandoned, I became bitter. And this only grew stronger the older I got, especially in my teenage years. So much so that I even wanted to change my last name to my mom's maiden name. Of course, I had still contact with my dad, but the relationship was always difficult and challenging for both of us. We had a lot of arguments, and for me, he was just the guy who was together with my mom, and I was the product out of it. In my eyes, the problem was always him. I felt angry, I felt rejected, I felt empty. At the same time, I always longed for a dad to be there. Needless to say, I really had father issues. The the healing process that you hope to share is the healing of what it what it is to feel abandoned and to feel fatherless. Right. And then to have somebody turn up and who is 
accessible as a father, but hasn't been there when you needed him. You know, mm -hmm. there were so many things that were in your experience and I wasn't able to share them with you because I just simply wasn't there. I was off busy having my own experiences. And you know that I've lived a rich, colorful life. Yeah. And so that that leaves you with the feel, that leaves one with the question, not, I'm not, I don't want to speak for you. That leaves one with the questions, what, you know, I'm not going to swear, I could easily swear, but like, what were you doing while I was experiencing X, Y, and Z? You were on the dance floor or you were like, well, where were you? What were you doing? You were in X, Y, Z country having your X, Y, Z experiences. And and that's hard. That's that's really hard. And, and that's the bit that I you know i i can't i can't come up against that there's nothing there's nothing that i can say that right i wish i'd been there for you right yeah. i i'm i'm glad that i had the balls myself mm. to put a stop to the situation that i was in because it was it was very bad for me like it was it was killing me. Wow. It was killing my essential self. Now this all changed slowly after I gave my life to Jesus. I realized I had to forgive everyone. And with everyone I mean everyone. I literally had a whole list of people that I had to forgive. It was hard at first, but I made a choice to forgive all of them, including my dad. Because the, the source of the problem was the feel, like you said, like you pointed out correctly, was the feeling of abandonment. Because really what I needed, I couldn't have gotten from you actually. If, uh, if it sounds crazy, but th what I really needed, I co could have only found in God, in Father, like the Father love that Godfather has for us. That's what I needed to be healed. That's what I needed to, to be able to say, I forgive you. So God took me into a real deep healing and deliverance process. The further Jesus took me, the more I was able to see my dad as my actual father and not as this guy I was angry at. Now at this point, everyone could say, well, praise God, you know, story is over, we have a testimony. But the truth is, God had just begun the story. Now fast forward a few years, this is the time where I went all in with Jesus. I visited my father again, but we ended up having an argument. Shortly after I was diagnosed with cancer, this is me in that time. While this whole cancer situation is a different story I already made a video about here on this channel, God used this situation to really change my heart. You went into that child, that experience as a child and you came out a man. Right, yeah. That was, that was honestly my experience. I was very worried about you. I mean, you were very young. I was very worried about you. I didn't know where you were really, and I didn't know how you were really. All I knew was that you didn't want to talk to us, you wanted to be left alone, and that the, that the Christian people that you were with wanted us to, in English, bugger off just leave you to it and that it was your body and that you could do with it what you wanted that was just like a red rag to a bull it was kind of like what's going on with him where is he why are you able to talk to him we're not able to has the problem his physical problem got worse has it got better right you know is he eating is he drinking oh my god he's not eating and drinking he's fasting it, it, it was it was very it was very uh, torturous actually through this physical pain of the cancer in my body god showed me that i really had to forgive my father and i guess i could say even further and even more i had to get really healed so one day in prayer, I would say, I forgive him in Jesus name. And you know, I would say like, God, you forgave me, I forgive him. I try to give that forgiveness I received from God. I try to release my dad 
And I said this over and over and over again. I forgive him in Jesus' name. I forgive him in Jesus' name. And every time it was like pushing a boulder, like inches at a time, pushing it further and further and further. Then suddenly, in this time of prayer, Jesus touched me powerfully and ripped all this anger, this bitterness, this rejection, and all this crap, this emotional stuff out of me. And I got, literally, I was delivered. I felt true freedom, and for the first time in my life, I felt true love for my father. My physical and my emotional pain, they were gone. I was able to tell my father that I forgive him for the first time in 20 years. I was able to call him dad and was able to tell him that I love him. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I left. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sorry that I felt I had to leave. Um, you know, I really am. <laughs> But I have you now. <laughs> you have me now. I have you now. <laughs> you have me the now. other way too. I have you now too. See, Jesus healed my wounded heart. It was never about who would be at fault, but about receiving Jesus' forgiveness for my sin and then releasing that forgiveness, giving that forgiveness and forgiving my dad 100%. My dad was not the problem. He never was. The problem was in here, the problem was the pain, the bitterness, the rejection, the, the loneliness, the emptiness. That was the problem. I needed God's father love and a real powerful healing touch of Jesus that would heal me and completely deliver me. With this testimony, I really want to tell you that Jesus wants to do the same with you. Maybe you don't have an issue with your dad, maybe you do. Maybe everything is awesome in your family and maybe stuff is really going down. However, God wants to impact your life. Jesus wants to step into your into your life powerfully and wants to touch it and wants to turn a bad situation around. Remember, the problem is not out there with the people around you. The problem is in here. Not you as a person, but in your heart. The problem is in your heart. Well, we might harbor bitterness or anger or emotional pain. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. We need to guard our heart. We need to, more than that, the Bible even says that we should, you know, clean our hearts and cleanse our hands. Actually, in the New Testament, it says, so that we would not be impacted by emotional pain and by all this this stuff we carry around this baggage that we carry around give it to jesus that's what he died for yes he died for your salvation but he died for your mental emotional physical healing and deliverance as well so i encourage you to reach out to him and to lean into god and let him touch you if you want to find out more about my cancer story and how God healed me, just visit yeshuaboyton.com slash about. You can read about it, you can watch the video, and I will see you in the next video.